everyone, and welcome to another episode of Liberate Blue Nations. My name is Eleonora, and today we're going to be talking about the new moon in Aquarius that happens on February 11th, with its peak time of 11.04 a.m. for Pacific Standard Time. I think by this point we're all really familiar with Aquarius energy, um, since there's been a ton of it lately, um, and we are already very familiar with Saturn as well. For this lunation, we have the Sun, the Moon, Mercury, Venus, Jupiter, and Saturn all in Aquarius. To start us off, we do have a lovely Venus-Jupiter conjunction in Aquarius. This is just like the cutest to me. It is two benefics um, conjunct, and even though it is in a Saturn-ruled sign like Aquarius, which means that there can be a little bit of like fixed and sobering energy, seriousness, and more of like a structure um, to this aspect is still very conducive to exploring and expanding through relationships, artistic endeavors or activities. Um, there's a lot of like luck and harmony and learning and growth that this conjunction can bring forth today. Next up we do have Mercury who is retrograde in Aquarius squaring Mars and Taurus. So take it easy with communication <laughs> during this time. As I always say with Mars squares it's not a time to be on the uh, defensive. With both planets of not only communication, but action, battling each other, squaring each other, like egging each other on right now, there could be a lot of stubbornness when it comes to communicating um, in our passions or our desires or simply speaking our mind. So especially since Mercury is retrograde, I would say think very carefully and choose your words carefully during this time and remember to pick your battles wisely not every situation is going to be worth your time and energy next up we have a close close almost exact square between saturn and uranus the exact square one the first one of three that we're having during 2021 is going to be on february 17th and as we know squares are aspects of tension and friction that can lead to a high culmination but can also leave us learning lessons to grow further. I feel like these squares between the planet of discipline and the planet of rebellion are bound to leave us shaken up, not necessarily in a bad way, but since it is going to be the signature of 2021, I think there is a lot of potential um, for change. Like we can be pushed to explore new boundaries in unconventional or uncomfortable ways so that we can shift our perspective. Okay, so now that we're all done with the aspects, I'm going to pull a card for you guys. And as always, this card or cards are going to be uh, energy that we can lean into for support and grounding. Okay, so we got the third house. For those of you who are not familiar on what the third house stands for is communication, immediate environment, short distance travel sometimes, it can also represent your community, your immediate community, your thoughts and how um, you relate to people and also siblings. I think the third house is here to let us know that we can rely on communicating, both not only speaking, but also listening. Um, and I think this calls for us to Pay attention to our relationships and how we can build upon those and how we can nurture those. And I also think that with Mercury being retrograde and the third house somehow somewhat signifying transportation and communication, it does really ask you to pay attention to your communication patterns maybe. How do you communicate with people? How is that working for you? Um, are you really getting any benefits from the way that you're communicating with people, whether it's because they did something that bothers you or you want to cheer them on or you want to support them or you want to be there for them but you don't know how or you're having a hard time finding out how to relate to others, I think maybe this is calling to like really, really put an effort on that and put, not effort, but put some, some work into it. If your communication patterns need to be worked on, then this is the time where we can 
um, definitely do that. So for services, as with every new moon, I do recommend intuitive readings. With Mercury Retrograde, we are bound to revisit these intentions that we'll be planting or trying to manifest during this lunar cycle. Um, you know, and ship them accordingly as they manifest. So keep that in mind. A reading might be a good um, way to actually know where you want to go or um, if you want to clear your head of, you know, any confusions that you have or if you don't know what to do basically. <laughs> for meditation during this time, we do have a meditation and healing for mental health and emotional prosperity with Lily Reyes. It's on the day of the new moon, February 11th. That's a Thursday and it's at 5 p.m. And as always, all of our meditations are $15 and you get a 48 hour replay usually going out right after the meditation is done. Okay, you guys, that is it for today. I hope everybody has an amazing new moon. Um, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, you can feel free to leave them below. Let me know how you're feeling. Um, if you need anything, you can always call us, email us, DM us at the shop. We are here for all your spiritual needs. I'm sending everybody much, much love, many, many blessings, and have a very happy new moon. Readings uh, shared time and space with someone who is spiritually connected. An opportunity to get clarity and reassurance, um, guidance on any area of your life that you may feel stuck or not in flow with. So readings are basically um, extremely helpful for you to make decisions that needed to be made. For having clarity on life's questions, healing, um, empowerment to move someone from fear to being empowered. When you're feeling stuck, when you can't answer the question yourself, when you find yourself in a little bit of a spin out. I don't think there's anything that a reading is not good for. You know, the perfect time for a reading can be any time. We are constantly changing, so we are constantly coming up against obstacles or reoccurring patterns that we need to check in with. When things just feel really heavy and dark and you might be a little confused about some of the things on your, on your path, maybe certain relationships or opportunities. So we all have blind spots, so when you find yourself in a blind spot, that's a really good time to get a reading. So readings are good to check in to find out where your progress is through the eyes of someone else who's holding you in the highest good for all concerned. Change is always good ultimately and sometimes it's hard to see that and readings bring you back to that center of what it's for for you. 